Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on. India's government has nothing to do with the Dani issues, says Minister amid opposition protest. Soaring inflation pinches Pakistanis, PM Shehba says IMF giving tough time. Bangladesh's near-term growth projected to slow to 5.5% since IMF. In our all the details, India's Parliamentary Affairs Minister on Friday said the government has nothing to do with the matters of the Adani Group, whose shares have tumbled following a report from U.S. short seller accusing the conglomerate of stock manipulation and accounting fraud. The statement came as the parliament witnessed ruckus for a second day with opposition lawmakers demanding a parliamentary probe against billionaire Gautam Adani. India's Minister of Parliamentary Affairs Prehlad Joshi said on Friday the government has nothing to do with the issues of the Adani group as the opposition demanded discussion over the matter after a US-based short seller firm published a report raising questions about the conglomerate's debt levels and use of tax havens. Both the houses of the parliament had to be adjourned amid disruptions for a second day by the opposition parties, which have demanded a joint parliamentary committee probe against Indian billionaire Gautam Adani. Opposition leaders have accused the government of safeguarding Gautam Adani. The opposition, all the opposition parties, unitedly want a discussion on this extremely important issue in as much as it affects the ordinary citizens of this country. And they believe that this is a matter of sufficient importance that the government should permit it. Now, as you know, the government is resisting. They don't want these issues to be discussed. They didn't want China to be discussed in the last session. They don't want unemployment and price rise to be discussed. Any issue that the government thinks will embarrass them, they don't want to discuss it. Seven listed Adani enterprises have lost more than half their market capitalization and shriveled to less than $100 billion after the Hindenburg Research Report accused the conglomerate of improper use of tax havens and stock manipulation. Adani has called the report baseless and said, its financials remain strong, but investor sentiment has withered, bringing an unabated fall in stock prices. Moving on. Shoaib Lone, a prominent Kashmiri activist, raised the issue of targeted civilian killings by terrorists in India's Jammu and Kashmir during his intervention at a UNHRC event in Geneva this week. He urged the international community to fix accountability on the cross-border sponsors of terrorism pointing towards Pakistan. Kashmiri activist Shuib Lone this week raised the issue of targeted civilian killings by terrorists in India's Jammu and Kashmir during his intervention at a UNHRC event in Geneva. He highlighted twin terror attacks on January 2, in which four civilians were shot dead in Dhangri village in Jammu and Kashmir's Rajori district, followed by death of two others, including a child in an IED blast in the same area. He also drew attention to the killings of minorities, including non-local workers. He urged the international community to fix accountability on the cross-border sponsors of terrorism, pointing towards Pakistan and said that candidates in the upcoming election in the Union Territory could be targeted next. Cross-border sponsors of terrorism resorted to targeting civilians to install fear among the people of Kashmir. Around 30 innocent people were killed in such attacks in 2022, at the time when Jammu and Kashmir prepares for upcoming election under the new constitution setup, we can no longer afford to let terrorist activity go unquestioned. Though this esteemed platform, I also wish to alert the international community that the candidates in the upcoming election are the next target of these terrorists. Unfortunately, such incidents will continue till accountability is fixed 
on the cross border sponsor of terrorism cross border terrorism remains a core concern for india which blames pakistan aids terrorists to spread unrest in kashmir valley a charge islamabad denies in news from pakistan after a hike in fuel prices by the pakistan government this week the public transporters in the country have also spiked their fares by nearly 10% This has dealt a heavy blow to the domestic budget of the masses who have lamented they are suffering the brunt of government's failed policies a report Days after the Pakistani government hiked the prices of petrol and diesel by 35 rupees per liter public transporters have also increased their fares by 10% which has come as a severe blow to the common public what will a poor man do in such inflation a commuter expressing his displeasure with the government's decision said meanwhile transporters also said they were left with no choice amid the frequent fuel price hike they said to reduce the expense on fuel they have reduced three trips to one but still have to shell out a heavy amount on fuel for their buses ara beda ghar kar diya hai pure pakistan ka hukumat ne beda ghar kar diya hai hyderabad se karachi aana ma आजाब हो गया है तीन सौ दस रुपए लीटर पेट्रोल हो गया डीजल हो गया गाड़ी वाले क्या करे गरीब लोग गाड़ी में आते तो भाई पाँच सौ रुपये किराया है खाने के लिए कुछ नहीं है आटा एक सौ साठ रुपये इसको हुकूमत वालों को जूते मारने चाहिए कितनी महंगाई हो गई गरीब आवाम का जीना दोपहर दो हो गया है अभी पेट्रोल और फीस हर चीज़ महंगी हो गई हमने किराया भी बढ़ा दिए पब्लिक की चीखें निकल गई आवाम की बड़े मेरे में आवाम से अपील हुकूमत से अपील है हमारी कि पेट्रोल डीजल को कम करें Meanwhile Pakistan's PM Shahbaz Sharif on Friday said the International Monetary Fund was giving his country a tough time over unlocking stalled funding you all know we are running short of resources sharif said adding pakistan at present was facing an economic crisis that's beyond imagination the imf's demand aimed at controlling the country's budget deficit have led to pakistan leaving its currency to market based exchange rates and hiking fuel prices More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has called for national unity against terrorism and urged the country has to avoid differences and become one wall against terrorism. His remarks came after the deadly suicide bombing in Peshawar this week which killed over 100 people mostly police personnel. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Friday called for national unity against terrorism and said If not then seriously history will not forgive them. His remarks come as Pakistan has been hit by a wave of terrorism. Addressing the Apex Committee meeting in Peshawar that was convened after Monday's deadly terror attack in the city's police lines area which claimed the life of 101 people Sharif said people praying at the mosque were subjected to martyrdom barbarically and he has come to express sympathies with their families. He said that the country has to avoid differences and become one wall against terrorism otherwise the purpose won't be fulfilled. कहीं भी उन्होंने दहशत गर्दों ने एक इंच पर भी कब्जा उनका नहीं है वो फिरते हैं वो वो इधर उधर जाते हैं लेकिन कोई जगह उनके कब्जे में नहीं है अगर ऐसी बात है तो ये एक खुशाइंद बात है लेकिन वो यहाँ पर किस तरह आए कौन उनको यहाँ पर लेके आया और किस तरह उनको यहाँ पर हिस्सा बनाया गया उजलत में और बड़ी एक अनड्यू स्पीड में ये एक ऐसा सवाल है Meanwhile Shahbaz Sharif has invited opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan to an all party conference set to take place in Islamabad on February 7th. The meeting is aimed at finding solutions to cement the daunting economic and political crisis in Pakistan reports suggest. The invitation is a major development as the Pakistan Democratic Movement led government and the PTI have always been at larger heads over almost all national issues since Khan's ouster as premier last April. In news from Bangladesh, the IMF on Thursday projected Bangladesh's near-term growth to slow to 5.5% in financial year 2023 compared to earlier projection of growth rate above 7% made before the Russia-Ukraine war. The projection came days after the South Asian nation secured an aid of 4.7 billion US dollars from the global lender. The International Monetary Fund IMF on Thursday projected Bangladesh's near-term growth to slow to 5.5% in financial year 2023 and 6.5% in financial year 
The global lender before the start of Russia-Ukraine war had projected this growth to be above 7%. The updated projection came two days after IMF approved monetary aid of 4.7 billion US dollars for Bangladesh, making it the first to secure such funds out of three South Asian countries that applied last year amid economic turmoil. The IMF in a statement said the fund would help Bangladesh to restore its macroeconomic stability and foster growth. IMF mission chief to Bangladesh Rahul Anand said Bangladesh is not in crisis, adding that it is among those which are dealing with the impact of global shocks of pandemic and the ongoing war in Ukraine. Bangladesh's current account deficit hit a record 18.7 billion US dollars in the last financial year which ended on June 30 as exports of garments failed to offset a surge in the energy costs. The Bangladesh Central Bank expects the deficit to fall to about $6.8 billion at the end of the current fiscal year. However, Bangladesh's regional counterparts, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, are doing much worse economically and have failed to get final approval for IMF loans. Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehal seems to be under extreme pressure from two major allies, RSP and UML. Chair K. P. Sharma Oli to reinstate Rabi Lamichane in his previous position of the Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister, reports suggest. The RSP chief was removed from office following a Supreme Court ruling which said he stood for election with invalid citizenship papers. Nepal's seven-party ruling coalition seems to be in a serious crisis after RSP, the Rashtriya Swatantra Party. A major ally has threatened to pull out of the government, as Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel has refused to reinstate party president Rabi Lamichane as Home Minister. 48-year-old Rabi Lamichane was removed as Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister late last month, following a Supreme Court ruling that he had contested November elections on an invalid citizenship certificate after abandoning his US citizenship, annulling his status as a lawmaker and effectively removing him from office. With backing from another key ally, CP and UML Chair K.P. Sharma Oli, the RSP's Central Committee on Thursday evening decided to continue to stake its claim on the Home Ministry and wait until Saturday for further developments, reports suggest. As per the constitutional provision, Prime Minister Dehel will have to seek a vote of confidence within a month if any of the ruling coalition partners withdraws its support to the government. RSP is the fourth largest party in the parliament and the third largest in the ruling coalition. Devotees and monks from different parts of the world paid respects to the relics of Lord Buddha and his two chief disciples that were put on display in India's eastern Bodh Gaya city this week. The relics were displayed to mark the 16th anniversary of the Jaya Shri Mahabodhi Temple. Devotees and monks from across the world this week paid respect to the relics of Lord Buddha and his two chief disciples, Sariputta and Mahamogalana, that were put on display in India's eastern Bodhgaya city. Devotees queued at Jaya Shri Mahabodhi Vihara, a type of Buddhist monastery, to seek blessings from Lord Buddha and his two disciples. The relics were put on display from Wednesday until the next three days to mark the 16th anniversary of the Jaya Shri Mahabodhi temple. On this occasion, it's a very special uh, thing is that we keep the Buddhas and his two chief disciples, Sariputta and Mahamoggala, here, their uh, uh, relics. We take out on these three days, first, second and third. So thousands of people, uh, devotees, when they come to Bodhagaya, so they have this... Uh, uh, this opportunity to pay their homage to the relics of this uh, great master. I came all the way from Bhutan to get the blessing, to seek the blessing of Lord Buddha's uh, relics here. Today is the first day of the display of the Lord Buddha's uh, relics here. Today uh, I got a blessing. Just now I received the blessing and I have uh, got fortunate to receive the blessing of the Buddha's uh, relics. So I truly feel very blessed and there's a special feeling within me. Bodh Gaya is revered among followers of Buddhism, where Gautam Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment under what came to be known as the Bodhi tree. 
Since antiquity, Bodh Gaya has remained the place of pilgrimage and veneration for Buddhists. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.